Welcome to Environmental Fridays. It is personal, season three. This season, we'll be featuring 12 episodes with 12 guest speakers from Barbados, Delaware, Grenada, Illinois, Kansas, Michigan, St. Lucia, Trinidad, Washington, and Virginia. Now here's our host, Dr. Desmond Hartwell Murray, and this week's co-host, Fiani Tony, and this week's special guest, Dr. Juan Francisco Morales. All right, and we want to welcome everyone to actually our final. Um, a final uh, uh, episode of season three of Environmental Fridays. It is personal. And um, our website, if you wanna learn some more about uh, Environmental Fridays, it is here on the screen. Are you guys all seeing the screen, my screen? Yes, no? Are you guys yes. seeing the screen? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Yes, we can. Okay. www.theenvironmentalfridays.com is where you can find more information. And today, um, this is our last uh, episode, as I said, and it's you know the holiday season, and so Environmental Fridays, we want to wish everyone, one and all, uh, happy holidays and. There's a number of different holidays that happens in December. I put a list of some of them. Um, anybody could tell which are the others that are missing? No, I think Boxing Day is one that I don't have up there that's missing. And so December seems to have a, a lot of different holidays in from different cultures, which is a good uh, thing. We also have some environmental days in December. Um, one is already gone, the Wildlife Conservation Day. We have Wool Soil Day already gone. International Mountain Day is coming up and Evergreen Day. So from Environmental Fridays, it is personal happy holidays to all. Our co-host today comes from uh, St. Vincent and Grenadines. His name is Vinay Vianney. Am I pronouncing, mispronouncing? Uh, Vian <laughs> say it again. Vianney. Vianney, Vianney Tony. He's from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which actually is where my sister was born in St. Vincent. Um, but he resides in Antigua and Antigua, so he's a Caribbean man. Uh, he's in the senior year. Um, his degree is criminology and criminal justice, and he's pursuing that at the University of the Southern Caribbean in Maracas, Trinidad. Um, his extracurricular responsibilities includes being the president of the Associated Student Body, which we over the years have just called ASB, president. And he is also the cultural club president for Venada. Um, he's very interested in uh, helping youth and in community outreach. And he plans to, after completing his studies, plans to uh, create programs, implement programs for disadvantaged youths and adults, young adults in St. Vincent, the Grenadines, and the wider Caribbean. So that's our pose for today. We welcome him and we thank him for accepting this role. So, Mr. Tony, it's your turn to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Murray. Good, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Environmental Friday, our session for today. We have with us our guest speaker, Mr. Juan Francisco Morales. I 
I hope I pronounced um, the last name correctly. Um, he is currently the curator of a national herbatorium of Trinidad and Tobago at the St. Augustine campus at UWE. He was a research assistant at the Missouri Botanical Garden and associate professor at Universidad Técnica Nacional in Costa Rica. He obtained his PhD from the Department of Biology at the University of Beirut, Germany. Um, Trinidad and Tobago have a long history of plant collecting dating from the 16th century, which accelerated with the establishment of the Royal Botanic, Royal Botanic Gardens and Herbarium in Port of Spain in 1818. Right, the Herbarium, the Herbarium has over 70,000 specimens and its mission is to collect, preserve, res research, and document the flora of Trinidad and Tobago and to provide floristic information about it upon request. Our guest speaker today is none other than Mr. Juan Francisco Morales. Welcome to our program. I really appreciate and we are looking forward to hearing what you are present, what you have to present today at this Evermetal Fridays program. Very good. So you could Thank go you very much. and um, share. One moment. Sure, five and second. No problem. So, short moment. Okay. It's coming up. Very good. So, yes. Um, so the first part of the presentation is to talk about what we are doing in the National Herbarium. And the second part is uh, what, what is my research? Uh, what I am doing in research outside Trinidad and link it here to the, to the country. And so this is what I'm gonna talk today. If you have any questions, so we are not seeing you. No, I just stopped the. Yeah, I stopped could you, could you turn your camera on. Ready. Yes, thanks. Uh, so, okay, this is what we're going to talk today. Um, the first part is about the National Herbarium in Trinidad Tobago, um, incorporating botany, molecular studies, and society. So, what are the global perspective of herbarium institutions around the world? That actually, you know, many years ago, the taxonomy was very strong everywhere in the world. And, but now they're very, the perspective for the botany is not very good. I mean, not botany, the institutions, United States and Europe, they received in the last 12 years after 2010, many money for the government uh, begin to be cut it. So even after, you know, the, the September 11 in 2001, many money was removed from the institution. So right now that is going even more and more and where the plant collection seems to be not important for some people. Then also the museums become, you can find, you can find this, botanical institutions or botanical collections are very linking to one research institution, to one university or to one museum. The museums are the most common ones in where you can find collections. So many institutions in the United States has, the United States has been removed. I mean, shut down and the collections sent to uh, bigger institutions because they don't have the funds to keep the collection running and all the stuff. Then also the buttons are more and more scarce in the real world. What is happening right now, in all the taxonomy, there are many phylogenetics. Phylogenetics is the science which study the relationships of the plants based on the DNA. But what is happening in the you know, United States and Europe, uh, there are more and more phylogenetics which don't know the plants on the field. And but 
in the opposite side, we got more and more botanists in the tropics, not just here in Latin America or in the West Indies, but also in other parts of the whole world. So, uh, but anyway, this is affecting the complete overview. So the, the actual situation is, there is a lot of money even here in Trinidad, the government is, the national herbarium is supported by the government and every year they remove 10%, 5% of with the budget. So we get less and less more, uh, money every year. We have two positions with our prison right now because there's no money to hire a uh, technician, library technician, whatever. So right now we have less people around. So was what the situation in the in the past there was botanical institutions. All the botany was made in Europe. Right now it's very easy to move around. You get an email, you get text, but even when the email started like 20, 30 years ago, the emails. I remember waiting, I be I was all the day waiting if somebody will send an email. Right now I receive a lot of spam and communication by email. So everything is changing. But in the past, the communication between institutions and people was very difficult because everything was by mail. But now the situation has changed. Uh, if you don't, if you want to work isolated without connection to other institutions, people sharing your databases, you are way beyond the past and you will receive no collaborations. And basically you will have a static and dead collection because you need to be including material, you need to be including more identifications and, that, and you must put all the data online because this is actually the cutting edge of the botany. So if you start, for example, if you keep isolated, that will be uh, the death of your institution. And then when the politicians they don't see any, they don't realize why a hamburger is important, they will shoot down the collection or just keep somebody like a, you know, like a fake curator or whatever, and where basically they're no, they don't have any power to anything in this in the collection. So, what is one herbarium? The herbarium is a collection, and we must understand that everything is linked. It's not possible to work just you can. It, of course, it's possible, but you will have very bad results. A herbarium, many people believe that it's like a greenhouse where we have living plants. So the people ask me uh, about plants, how to take care about it. No, no, I am not a physiologist. I am not an agronomist. You have a different uh, wrong overview of what, what is the uh, you know, situation. So we need first a herbarium in proper conditions, preserve it. Then we need databases. Right now it's mandatory to have databases and try to set up to upload everything online. There are many several places where you can upload your data and everybody can access that data everywhere in the world. To have a staff training and motivated staff because if you don't have motivation it will be very difficult to work with the people. Then it's very important to have a research network because it's no way you can, you know, there are many specializations. Uh, there are many specialists in different topics, only in plants, for example, you can find specialists on pollinization, and ecology, um, morphology, uh, systematics. So it's not just a botany. The botany have different specialization. So that is why you must, you need mandatory research network because that, that is the way that you can get projects or training for the students. And the most important are the students because many years ago, I was a student. I wasn't a student from, you know, with a, even with a bachelor degree. And right now the people with training me is already retired. And that's what the same history with me. Everybody was just teaching at the universities. One day we were retired and we need replacements and the replacements are the students. So we need to get them motivation and to provide them motivation to work with the plants and all the situation. So for what this is important, but what this need work is important. First, with the students that I tell you, every time we move around, uh, have trouble with me. I have made field work in many different countries. 
And I, I always try to incorporate the student, master students, bachelor students, basic students, because after you can have access to places, dangerous places or isolated areas. And all these people we get, uh, we, we continue working botany with related fields. And that's very important. And for example, all these people in these pictures, right now they get a PhD or they are actually PhD students. Uh, through grants we found for them and they're studying outside the country where they come from. So that is why it's very important to have motivations and, and train not just students, but local people, because local people is very important. So for what it is, everything is linked in what we can produce with this information. We can produce papers, scientific papers. The common people will not read scientific papers because they're very technical. You got many technical information, you must be training to read it and to understand what we're trying to tell you, even if, if it is just saying the same language. Also, you got different language. You can find papers published in English, Spanish, and Portuguese uh, concerning all this area, even in Trinidad and Tobago, not just, in, not just English. But the most important is also to produce field guides for common people. Uh, for example, these. The first book that I did plan for Central America was a project in which, in which I was involved in all the Central American countries where, where we made a field guide of edible plants in South America because it's very interesting. Sometimes in one country, a plant is used widely, but in the next one, nobody knows it, but it's very common. So we provide, you know, for common people, no technical uh, information, how you can recognize the plant, photographs, and how you can make the receipts for make the food. So that's incorporate the common, uh, that transforms that information from the herbarium for common people. Then also we made field guides in the past. The idea is to do the same here in tree that field guides of plants where you don't need to just have the family name, the species name and photographs, because that is the easy way that we're in how the people can identify and recognize the plants, just looking for pictures or looking for training for local people. The tourists, the tourism industry in Latin America is very strong in some countries. Countries, so for example, in Panama, the Amerindians, they used to paint all this uh, handcraft for tourists, tourists, which actually are made with balsa wood, which is very light wood, which you can find here in Trinidad. And so a true project, we hire these people from Panama, local people from local communities to provide the training, how to make these paintings, how to make all the process to other American Indians in Central America. So these people right now are, are making very good handcraft devices, and so that is the way in which you can transform the button, okay? Without forget the people, because the people in the mountain, the local people, is not just to produce scientific papers. The scientific papers are very important, but you need, you need to think about the Marian people, where they get the very important information, and you can train them. Or the people living in the mountains, or the people living in the countryside, because this. These people used to produce food for the city and all this stuff. So you must keep all in mind when you are working with Boston, okay? So talking about the Trinidad and Tobago National Herbarium, uh, this National Herbarium is the second oldest of all Americas. Even this, the first one is the Rio de Janeiro Botanical Garden, Brazil, that was founded 10 years before this one, but these are the two oldest in all Americas. Even the United States, in the United States, the old institutions were founded around 1860, 1870. So the oldest collections that you will find, the oldest herbarium, the second one is this herbarium, the National Herbarium. So this is very important. Many of the people, even here, the academics of the university, they, don't, they didn't know that. And so we have a lot of material, historical collections. And the specimens, after you began to study the specimen, you find like spots where many collections were made. I 
show you showing you here different types dates and where the information the collection were made. Okay. So we have very old specimens. For example, uh, this specimen over here was collected 202 years ago. And so far as the oldest I have seen in the collection. So one, we are not seeing, have you advanced your slide? Yeah. Yeah, we are not seeing the advancing slide. What slide are you on now? I'm moving in different ones, so I will stop sharing. Okay, so we see, okay, so we see, you see it the right now. oldest specimen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we-, we At the start, you just let me know, okay? Okay. And for example, this is the oldest collection that we have. Was collected 202 years ago. You must keep in mind that we don't care about the color of plants because we work with morphology. So sometimes the people say, wow, but this is very old, very bad looking specimen. We don't care because we don't, after the material is dry, many of the collections lost the color, but we work with morphology, so that is not important. So this is a very old specimen, very, very old. Within the collections, I have seen similar collections from Brazil, but most of them are in Europe. Uh, but here in Latin America, the United States, you cannot find such old specimens. So I am moving to the next one. Okay. What we're doing right now in the collection, we're trying to, um, uh, I'm moving. Every time I change, I will say, it, so it doesn't move, you will tell, tell me. Yeah, it hasn't moved. And um, it is moving not. It's stuck in the same it hasn't. No, it hasn't moved. It's the same thing. There you go. You can see it right now? Yeah. Uh, current projects? Current projects, yes. Okay, so this is what you can see right now. We are trying to get in from the collection of alphabetical order because the collection was arranged in a weird system that was proposed many years ago. And so right now the collection is of alphabetical order families, which it's easy for the people to use it. Restoration, making the restoration of all the specimens and separating the material from other countries. So it's not working, something is... Okay, so it's advanced. Just one moment, something is not... Just one moment. Okay. I, will, I will stop sharing because there is a problem with the presentation. Just one moment. It's okay, no working. problem. Properly. Sorry, you came back now. So you're back in. And um, should still be able to share slides. Yep. So you see the presentation again? Yes. We are seeing okay. we are seeing all the slides. So you need to select one. No, I am weird. I'm just got this not working again. The presentation. Okay, so do you see the full screen right now? Or not. Um, not the full screen, but it will work. And we see in the one with the red fruit on the fruit. left okay. hand side and forest on the right hand side. Okay, so full screen now. That's good. Okay, so for example, what we are doing right now is moving around the island because many of the collection that we have in the past are very, uh, there are many gaps in the collection. So we are trying right now to get uh, more collections because for some species for like this one, the Gete Lucia was, this is one on Nasi, the same family of the Kashima trees and the source of, source of, and we, this tree was collected the first time was described it from Shawanas. There's no forest anymore in Shawanas. So, um, we found the same tree after 100 years. The last collection was made 90 years ago and there's no recent collection. We just found it in Morakas Valley. So we're trying to move. Um, uh, so the question is, 
is this country over collected or there is something else that you can find here? You must take in consideration, consideration the size of the country. This country is very small. Costa Rica is 10 times bigger, more than 10 times bigger. And Brazil is more than 1,600 times bigger. So actually Trinidad and Tobago is very small, but this country in the last um, years, just in the last year, we have found new records, plants that were not reported before, mm. uh, like all these species were recorded here. So the question is, if there are something still to be made, yeah. There are many, uh, many plants that we don't know how common they are. And also we are finding new records. New records is a plan that there are two options. Either describe it somewhere else or could be new. And for these species, for example, uh, we have this, the situation of this orchid. The most common species, so the most related species is the one on the left. But when you see the plants, the plants look looks like very different. So I send some flowers to some specialists, friends, colleagues that they work in this group, basically in northern tropic. And yeah, they're pretty sure that this could be a new undiscovered species. And when you start a distribution, you also you can find more interesting, more interesting information because the sister species is distributed wide everywhere from Mexico to Panama. But it's not recorded in Colombia, it's not recorded in Venezuela where there, there was, there are still today many specialists working in orchidacy. So that's give you the, based on the, this, the opinion of the specialist that this could be an undescribed species. So still there's many work to be done here in Trinidad and Tobago. So, for example, that work you were collecting, this is Dan Javanel, he is our field assistant. And that species were, was collected in that, that fallen branch. And I just saw the plant without flowers and I took the plant here and I got it in cultivation in my office. So we got the flowers and we discovered that was uh, probably undescribed species. So it's still in this country, there are many more that need to be done. Uh, and what is the idea? The idea to make more collection right now is what we are doing moving around the country is to, to we are working in tag the information in a database in where we can have maps as for example, as this one in Costa Rica and where you can get, you can get where the species is growing and then you can spot the probable areas in where the species is growing. And also when you get all this information, you can have Download, download the information and integrate the same information with <coughs> different other databases, and you will know exactly where the plant is growing everywhere in the tropics or making phylogenetic studies about when the plant is producing flowers. Because, you know, if you live just in, it's very interesting when you can travel around the tropics because. For me, for example, in my situation before to travel, I, I was thinking that everywhere in South America was exactly the same as in Costa Rica 40 years ago. But it's not. I mean, the situation in the summer and the winter is, uh, is very different uh, comparing to the situation that we have here, for example, in Trinidad, Trinidad, Tobago, and Costa Rica. We have more or less the same rainy season and summer time, summer time. It's more or less the same month. But in Colombia, it's not the same. In going south, it's changed. Totally. So that is where it's very important to get all this information uh, in a database. What we are doing right now, we are working in uh, making more collections in different areas of the country, all around the country, because we, we will start a project for a new flora of Trinidad and Tobago. The flora of Trinidad and Tobago was begun in 1930. 1921, 100 years ago, and the last volume was published 30 years ago. It is simple, it is not, not finished, so that you know, many changes have been made in the last 10, 20 years. So we are gonna make a new flora, published an electronic. Electronic is not just to provide the scientific test. 
also providing photographs of all the plants that we can collect in this country because for somebody with a training, it's better to enter a website and compare what you have with the flowers and the picture for the local program. And also we are working in some more like forest studies and we'll give, uh, I will keep telling you more about what we are doing. Uh, in my case, my, my own research here in Trinidad today. So I will tell you about, we're gonna talk now about Posinacea. Posinacea is one of the family that I study and we're a specialist. To understand what's happening in the world, we just must uh, taking in consideration the history. When America was discovered and before that, all the kings, they used to have imperial, imperial gardens. So many gardeners came to America to collect plants because America was a chance to find many interesting and beautiful plants like orchidaceas, bromeliads, and cactus. cactus. But then, uh, okay. The situation of the family that I started, suppose in IC, was also very heavily uh, hunted everywhere because suppose in IC got the showy flowers. And so many of these plants were collected. For example, the tree suppose in IC was collected here in the Caribbean and was described at the same time with the botany began because they got showy flowers and they are widespread in the Caribbean and the West Indies was the first place where in which the plants were collected. But what's happening with discovered America? Um, this is uh, this is the Amazonian basin, for example, and what do you see there is a road, the Trans Amazonic Highway, and this is the first station when they start the road. We got native forests. You will not find this here because this country is very small, but this is the way in the forest station is still going on in Brazil. It was to start a long time ago when the colonization began. They started with a road, then the farmers began to make uh, open areas just to cut, you know, cattle and crops, but then they moved to other places and everything is tried. So for example, this is in Bolivia, all these try lines are roads. You can see how they are moving everywhere. And in some states of Brazil, the situation is worse because for example, in Rondonia, you can see there all the roads, the main roads, like I saw the secondary roads and everything was destroyed. That green area is a protected area, a very protected area that is why it's still green. But that is the situation everywhere in the tropics. So that affected many plants as the plant as this family, which, in, which I am a specialist. So just to give you one introduction about the two families, Aposinaceae used, used to be considered distinct for a sister family, Ascapidaceae, based on the differences of the to pollen, because in Aposinaceae, the pollen is located in anthers, but in Ascapidaceae, in these smaller structures, what well, actually are pollinia, sacs of pollen. But based on DNA, they got many information that provide many changes now. For example, the taxonomy was based on the morphology, but sometimes what you see is not reflect natural relationship. For example, I don't have any hair. How many people without hairs are in the world? Many, Trinidadians, but we're not family. But somebody, if us, somebody from other country can say, okay, I will put all the guys without hair in one group because they don't have any hair. It's some of morphological character, but we have different evolution. And we get, because it's something every, uh, uh, you can, you get it from your father, but we're not the same. We are not family, we are not related, but we got the same structure. This is conversion um, evolution. When you can have plants without, uh, with that same character, but they don't represent something similar. So when we start using the DNA, we get this. Uh, some groups, we get several families in the same place. So that was the situation with these two families. And right now that's why they are considered one family. So you will see everywhere you study plants, 
or you see how the names are being are changing, has changed in the last years because of the NEA. Um, so what we are doing right now here, what I am doing, we're studying different groups in basically in Latin America and the Caribbean and the, and the Caribbean starting. These are different groups of opposing the family language I am specialist, and trying to resolve the taxonomy. Also, we are starting a small group of Bromelaceae here in the Caribbean in Trinidad and Tobago, where Raria is a genus of bromeliads. Epi epiphytes you can find here in the trees, but in Trinidad we got two species and some other species of Brisia, and we are starting the borders and circumscription of this genera based on DNA with people from Costa Rica and Colombia. So what is, what the button is, I mean, if you start working button, at first you start working in Trinidad and Tobago, but then you cannot just work here. You must, you must move around because the plants don't have any borders. I mean, the borders are made by politicians, by the human beings, but the, the plants have, some particular distribution and you must study the plant the field. So for example, the Puis, this is why I have made field work in different areas. So many botanists make field work in different areas across, across Latin America, all the countries, even continent to understand the variation. Uh, in the Tepuis, many of the plants where I study are endemic. Um, for example, the Pico Narolini is, is, is a border between uh, Venezuela and Brazil, and it's the highest point of Brazil, 3,000 meters. But this very amazing because you are in the middle of a flat area, and then you see from very, very far away peak, racing from zero level meters of the uh, up to 3,000 meters. Um, also, we move around to these insular birds, which are granitic oak crops in Brazil, where they have a very highly endemic plants. Uh, and where many of the plants there are endemic just to one rock and you move, you move to, the, to the following rock and there is nothing. So plants in the Indies in where we have high elevation plants growing up to 4,000 meters, also in the West Forest, very wet areas there. It's three nuts wet, but there are areas in Colombia and we get rain 350 years a year. I mean, basically there is no summer, it's very wet. So, and also from these limestone areas in the Caribbean where that's, that's uh, some population have crazy variation of the shape in the shape of leaves and flowers, and I will show you. And dry areas, I mean, for example, when you see this, what you can see there, nothing. It's just a savanna, no trees, no plants, but along these valleys, we found very interesting and row narrowly endemic plants. That is why you need field work everywhere. Also going to the American, to the Amazon embassy and finding these white sand formations. The white sand formations are savannas in where everything is just white sand. So you are walking in the middle of tall forests in the Amazon and then you enter in these areas and where everything is just white sand. So everything is Small, I mean, you can find crazy plants and all this stuff. And then in, in the formations in Brazil, where you find rocks and all this stuff. This is why, that is why we have to make field work to understand the intraspecific morphological variations. For example, you have, you can see here the two images. It's a cut of the petiole of one fern in the same picture. But that is why you must study the plants carefully here in Trinidad, everywhere. Because you can have, at one point, you can have a tree or mushroom, but the same image, just turn it around. It's a happy change. It's the same image, just uh, turn it around 100, 180 degrees. So, what we found here, for example, the extreme morphological variations in some species. This species is widespread. And we don't have ingredient and train that, but you can see here how the same plant are very different across the range, but doesn't have any the the oh when you start the population, the, the, the plants are basically the same. There are no DNA uh, different regions or whatever. 
And sometimes you find in the same plant, so are from the same plant, you can see the variation of the shape of the, shape of the leaves, of the leaf blade, for example. So if you study just a bearing specimen, you can make many mistakes and presume that there are more than one species. When actually the same one, polymorphic. And this is species is widespread here in Trinidad and Tobago, it's one of your super. Flower is yellow with a red, uh, the red center. And when I was living in Brazil, I planted this plant in front of my office. In photograph from the right, from the left, is the same plant from the right, just the right picture was taken at the end of the uh, summer. And there is very few water, so you can see, you can believe if you didn't start the plants in the field. You've been hearing me that, that you have different species, and no, it's the same species, just with variation derivated from water. And also the coloration, Mandevilla subsagitata, the first one species is present here in Trinidad everywhere in the, in the mountains, basically. And you can see the flowers and the coloration. So that's what botanists, we must study population, not just locally. You became an international specialist. You must study plants in different ways because it's the plants could be just found in one area, but could be widespread. You must understand the variations. So, I move. This is just to end the presentation, I guess something is missing. Yeah, I have to, there, there's a part missing, but I have to translate the word. I guess it's there. Well, the, the genus Mandevilla is what is it's a genus, the biggest genus I have that I am studying is more than 200 the species, is widespread in the tropics. And we're trying to make some phylogenetic stuff and some information. This is what we call like phylogenetic tree. It's like organograms where they show the relationship species based on DNA. But why this is important? I mean, if you ask me, what is the practical use of these phylogenetic studies? Because otherwise, what is important? Well, for example, Mandevilla, Zinuda study, here in Trinidad, now, but in Europe, in the United States, in Japan, is very important for like a, for ornamental internal plants. Here you will get no money in Latin America, West Indies, nowhere producing hybrids or varieties for sale. But in Europe, they get a lot of money because. After you produce, uh, there is a process, a long process where it's not done. You must prove that what you have done, you made it. Just, you can say, well, this is a hybrid. I got the plant. This is the father, this is the mother, and this is the hybrid. So you can make a, a phenotypic analysis, DNA, and then you can prove, and you can get the rice, get the right of the hybrid for five years, and then we can prove it. Everybody can pay your fee. But start working with these people, like, almost 50 years ago, exactly. We turned from this, we, they just have three species to this other situation in where based on the relationship, relationships of the DNA, we transfer this to this and to this. So right now, there are many plants of many colors available in Europe based on the work that we have made in the past with DNA. And also, just to end the presentation, is more more information related to the health. For example, this tribe is widespread everywhere in the tropics. Here in Trinidad, we have two. But these plants, they have all of these plants. They have pyrrocyladines alkaloids, which actually are cancerigenous. It's very interesting because, for example, the people who eat honey. I like the honey. The honey is natural. Yeah, producing by bees, of course. It is 100% healthy. The pollen, the nectar is full of alkaloids. In the pyrrocyline, pyrrocyline alkaloids are cancerigenous. It's not supposed to be proven. So even, you know, something like, looks like very natural can be harmful. 
But so we made this study of this tribe some years ago and here in Ad, but in El Salvador, these flowers of one apocinaceae, they are used everywhere to produce something like doubles, but with, you know, with flour more dense. And the people eat it. Indeed, the, they put flowers inside. They fill it with flowers and they eat the flowers. And we just started the relationship. Now, some people, after we made this project, start to start to start a relationship because in El Salvador, in Central America, the rate of cancer in the intestines and stomach is very high. So they are starting, there is a relationship between the high rates of consumption of these flowers, compare it, uh, because they know and we know they have these spirals of the alkaloids and the people eat too much. I mean, it's like the, well, not the hot pepper, but the hot pepper in turn, that's very, people eat a lot, but in, in like to eat doubles in Trinidad is the same situation with that flowers in El Salvador. So through this phylogen, through this uh, phylogenetic study, we, dis we discovered that some of these plants get pyrocylidine and alkaloids and we, we were the base for some other people to start doing uh, medical research to research to see if there's a relationship. So, well, basically, this is the presentation that we have. Um, I don't have a fourteen question, whatever. I am available. Thank All right. You. Okay. Thank Sorry you. for the inconvenience, but this computer, all the seventeen uh, screen inches, inches screen computers, they got the same problem. We just put something to share. Um, I got the same problem. I got an extra computer, but. Secretary is on leaving, I can access. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This is a lot of good information. Um, would it be possible for us to also, would you be able to provide us with a PowerPoint itself? Yeah, of course. No problem. Beautiful flowers and lots of information. That was That's actually one of the things that I'm wondering about. I mean, basically you have like a huge, reservoir of information that other researchers and scientists could um, could use. Um, you're talking about natural product uh, chemistry, where, for example, they discover um, or try to investigate and discover um, chemicals in the plants, like you talked about these alkaloids. Um, entomologists trying to, to identify insects associated with the plants. Um, the interest there with the DNA um, and how it's influencing uh, taxonomy. I mean, it's a lot of information there that other scientists could work with. So my question is, do, how much collaboration do you do with the you know, scientists in the Caribbean as well as outside of the Caribbean? Well, I got, uh, I mean, in the Caribbean or outside the Caribbean? Both, both, because people would be interested, yeah. yeah. So, I got this position 14 months ago and, you know, because of COVID, uh, I was working alone for about five months, just uh, the cleaner was here three days during the morning. So I was basically alone. And the situation everywhere because COVID was, even still, for example, there are some institutions in the United States, they don't accept foreigners, just local people. But uh, we started after I, enter here I am trying to fix some bugs. But the next year more specialists will come okay. to make pill work for many years. I mean the last time that I mean specialist was here, I don't have any idea about how long it was. I mean it's taxonomist because I have been in college or whatever I am not an oncologist. Mm -hmm. But many other people we have connecting for example every time that I collect something you need a network to work otherwise you can not being a specialist in all the plants. So when I have some questions about some plants, 
I can identify a plant, send the plant the picture to some of the colleagues. They and they return the name or the possible name. So actually, we're working in a mid work with some other institutions in Costa Rica, Colombia, many other many other countries. Because I have traveled, I have made field work in many countries. So people interested to come here to make the research and for the flora, we will import for the flora of Trinidad. We will incorporate many other specialists. Here in the Caribbean, we have some contacts before with Mana Campus in, uh, in Jamaica. Mm. People from Puerto Rico up to France, they, they work there at the university. So we have some idea projects and stuff. Yeah, but uh, you cannot, I mean, you can, you can do it, but you need a research network to make a good job and connections. Yeah. Also, in the Botanical Garden, this is the largest, the most important place in Latin in America uh, for botany, and they are willing to pay the first shipment of material from here to the United States. If that is a lot of money that we will save, they will pay the bill. So we just prepare the specimens with the permits, and we send the specimens to there. They type the information, we can accept the information on tropicus, which is the database that they have, and we can download information, make maps, and all the stuff. So yeah, we are working on that. I mean, we cannot stop working like, yes, everybody at the same time, because it's, it's not possible to work in that way. You must, you must start making a network of people and involving and incorporating more people. Yes. OK. Serena, you could unmute and ask your question or comment. Uh, hi, Pro Professor Morales. Thank you very much for doing this. Um, Myself and a small group of friends of the Botanic Gardens have um, started a butterfly garden. And we are in search of post plants, which are endemic or native to Trinidad and Tobago. And I would like to know if it's possible to get online to look for specimens or names um, to verify what kind of host plant we would need. H how would I go about doing that? Yeah, I mean, well, actually I'm not a specialist on that, but I know that in, I used to work in Costa Rica in one institution which is not, doesn't exist any, anymore, which was the National Institute of Biodiversity. And I know that there are some people, um, they were entomologists, actually were specialists in doing all this butterfly stuff. So I know they publish it because in the institution in which I work, we used to publish books. And uh, bilingual, in English and in Spanish, not all of them. But we started from one point to publish all the books, the field guides were um, in Spanish and in at the same time, so more people can buy it because we got many tourists coming to Costa Rica. So you can request my email address from Dr. Murray, and he can send you. I can send you the names of some books in, in where they provide the scientific name, the picture, and the information. Or even more, I can give you the contact of some people that in Costa Rica they used to work with this butterfly information and they can uh, provide you the checklist. Some of the plants are coming here because I have seen some of the plants and some other are not, but would you got the names, you can track the plants and then- that, the plant and that, that was the question. For example, there is the Piper, P-I-P-E-R plant, but there are so many of them. And I was curious because it's a host plant for a specific butterfly. And I was just as to whether I could find on your database what is native in Trinidad under that family name. Yeah. Because even the entomologist um, like Professor Cock, who was in Trinidad and is now in England, you know, all of us are still, it's still not precise, for example, they can say, well, this particular Lepidoptera 
likes this family, but to actually find the plant that belongs to that large family to plant in the botanic gardens and then to label is, a, is like looking for a needle in a haystack. So I'm curious as to whether or not, I am not a scientist, I am not um, part of UE or any other university. Is it possible to get online at your database in uh, the herbarium? Is, that, is it possible for somebody like me to get into your information? Well, yes and no, I will tell you why yes, and I will tell you why not, but I will provide you a solution. Okay, solutions I like. Uh, problem without solutions are you a problem. So the thing is, we don't have, this, this is one of the bugs that I'm trying to fix right now. For some reasons that I don't want to discuss, uh, the information of all herbarium was is in a database, but was stopped. The information is not being typed in that database, which actually is in GBIF, the GBIF portal, you can access the information, but that will provide you information about the specimens, not the species. This is something different, for example. I will give you one information, one example. Uh, that information which is online is incomplete, but will provide information on one, one specimen. It's like to say that database will provide information about you. You are a specimen, but not about the population, the human beings in Trinidad Tobago. You need information about the human beings. I mean, the genus, where the plant is endemic or not. So the question is, it's not available, but the solution is, there is a checklist published six years ago, and it's not online, but I have a PDF, I have a Word document. So if you send me a, an email, I can send you back the, just that information in where they get a checklist of all the plants in Trinidad and Tobago. And it is stated if this plant is exotic or is native, okay? And the places in where the, it is growing. So my solution is, that is what, why I still, um, the first goal for the next year is to put this database online again working. But anyway, that database will not resolve the situation because that, that database will not tell you if the species is endemic or not. But then you have the checklist where all the plants, it is stated, it is exotic native, exotic native, so you can know exactly the plant is native or exotic. And for the precise location, this checklist provides some general locations, but to know exactly where it's going, where it's growing, you must contact here to see if we know or we have seen it. Because, you know, I just have one, Dan has a long, Dan Jagernot has a long time working with us, but uh, to be a specific where the plant is growing, we need to ask Dan or myself if I have collected or Dan has seen it. Yes. So the solution is that you can request Dr. Murray and the, my email, I will send you back the document. Thank you very much. And I will be in Trinidad in late January. So I'm going to actually, um, hopefully you will be there to visit with you. Yeah, I will not be here before the 9th of January because I will be on leave, but I will come back here the 9th, during the night. Okay. After well, 10 January, I will be here. Okay, so so you will be there in February? Yeah, 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 I have to teach the next semester, so I will be here okay. for five months full time here. Thank you very much. Very welcome. Very good, very good. Any other questions? Yes, I have a question to ask. Okay. Yes, so uh, Professor Morales, um, have, you found any, have you found any similarities between plants collected in limestone regions and desert regions? Between plants collected in what? In limestone regions and desert regions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, limestone, when you find limestone areas that is not precisely like that, but um, limestone means possible areas of endemic plants. Because, you know, when you go in limestone areas, uh, many plants are just found there growing on the limestone. 
when you move away from the limestone, the plants are not growing. Sometimes the plants can grow everywhere. For, when you find limestone formations, you must find carefully what is growing there because there's a high chance to find endemic or not describe it plants, which actually are just restricted to these areas. Even for example, when you go, there are some plants endemic to Cuba because Cuba has many limestone areas or white or sandy areas where you find the plant just there, nothing. So yes, it's a very interesting ecosystem that you find very interesting differences. That is why we just, when I show you all these rocky areas in South America, the populations and the species are native and just endemic to, their, to, that, to those areas. So you don't make sure the world you will not uh, find new species on your record. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. There are is about limestone, rocky formations and growth. So we have another question or comment from Michael. Michael, you could unmute. All right, thank you. Okay, so you mentioned that the project called Plants of Trinidad and Tobago was halted after its original launch in 1921. So to your knowledge, what measures are being taken to ensure the longevity of the project this time around? Sorry, the connection is very bad. They have problem with the connection. This, um... Can you repeat it it's because I can hear the computer? Right. Question. So you mentioned earlier that the project called Plants of Trinidad and Tobago. Yep. Um, it was launched in 1921, but it was halted. So I'm asking, to your knowledge, what measures are being taken this time around to ensure the longevity of the project? The thing is, all the projects, Florida projects, take a long time to be finished. Why? There are several reasons. First, when you involve people, they, they never pay you to make a project. I mean, the, when you are, when you became a specialist, the people ask you if you want to collaborate. And there are some groups in where there's only one or two taxonomists in the world. So you say, well, we have to finish this project in one year. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or three years, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they take forever to make the treatment. <laughs> or, or they never made the treatment. So it is funny that all the pro projects, all of them, I take started in 1930, ended in 1980. Uh, Flora of Costa Rica, I was working in that project for many years, starting in 1987 and ended in 2020. That is 33 years. There is a problem. And then you get people waiting for treatment for specialists, waiting for money to make the publication. It's a lot, there are many factors. And the thing with Trinidad Tobago, there was never a project. I mean, the first curator here decided with some other guys in England to make a flora project without money. So they just started 100 years ago. There are many facilities right now to do a project, um, but it was not a project. It was like a personal idea. So it was a project, was going on, going on. That is what the project takes so long. But the idea right now is based on the experience that I have in other countries working with Flores. Um, the idea is to make something more um, concentrated, more synoptic, and we will provide to the specialists a frame. They just need to complete some information on that frame and working with a, if we know that that person takes so long to make the treatment, we will, put, we will uh, give the treatment to two people. So there will be two co-authors. If one is not working, at least the second will be working and yeah. But this is very difficult because if you are paying somebody, you can request results, but this is basically just in the time that you have. And many of the people is, over teaching, they don't have time to make research. Even here, there are people that they complain that they're, you know, there are no more teaching assistant because there is no money. They are taking 80, 80 students divided in four courses, and this is crazy just to make, you know, to, to mark, to review marks and all the stuff, to review assignments. And it's very, it takes a lot of time. And yeah, 
So it's not too easy to provide solutions, but you can provide a better frame to get uh, faster results. Okay. So Susan and Dr. Chan, you have a question you could unmute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unmute, unmute. Unmute, we're not hearing you. Yes, you're hearing me now? Yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Morales, for that very insightful presentation. Uh, I just have two questions um, that I, I'm curious about. One is, do you all have a catalog of uh, plants with medicinal value for Trinidad and Tobago? Well, the thing is, uh, Yes and no, I will tell you why. Yes is, uh, in my case, we just started with some plants, that will be your field forever. It's like, a, you know, I am a taxonomist and a phylogenetic, so I work in phylogenetics and taxonomy. But this in plants is like the, the mouth and the nose. They're very close, but the dentist will not fix your mouth, your nose. And the otorhinolaryngologists will not worry them out. They are very close, but they are very different. And in the same situation, for me, the face is the field of specialists. Oculus, very close to the nose, but it's not the same. Uh, very close to our, the neurologist, but it's not the same. So I'm not interested myself to work, never was interested to work in the small plants because it's not my field of research. So, but here, uh, I know there are many, it's a potential, high potential of tourists to develop something here in Trinidad. For example, in Costa Rica, in Colombia, in Brazil, you can go to the supermarket and you can get, you can have in bags, very nice bags, uh, medicinal plants. Here, or even you can go to the market I go to the Suna Panorama here, not, but in Costa Rica, you go to the local markets and you find this spot in where they get, the guy say just medicinal plants, and you say, well, I have a problem, with, you know, whatever. Yeah, this is plant is very good, you must make an infusion or whatever. So this is a very sensitive and very important item. So the idea when I started here, one of the staff members, uh, this person will be starting to make a database because I have a huge database database that uh, from Costa Rica I I don't I didn't make it somebody else make it then I, I have a copy it's in Spanish but it's very easy to translate information from Spanish to English right now so I gave this copy to that person of the stuff but for some reasons uh, I guess she had done it. this person had to make it a great improvement. I don't know if she's working or not at this moment. So since I know this is very important, uh, we incorporate our students, uh, one student, two students actually, but just one, one uh, keep working and just trying to do a database, trying to make a compilation of the information. And I will not do it, but I want somebody here dealing with that because there is a big potential. In other countries, I tell you, you can get in the supermarket bags with the name and even the bag you get the receipt, how to prepare and what is used for. Instead to go and certify it, for example, this is this species is certified that is this species because in many places you got in a bag and you got, this is made it from, you know, this liquid is made it from uh, whatever, but it's fake because nobody certifying what is inside. So, but there's nothing like that in Trinidad. So I have identified this potential for local people to make money in this country. Everything is more, is very expensive and to incorporate this common knowledge from the people. But yes, so I am not working because I don't have time, but somebody else in the staff is planning to work. If he will not, I try to incorporate the students to specialize in that particular field. Okay. Oh, thank you. I'm so glad you mentioned that because there's so much potentiality. People use it on everyday basis, but it has not been documented as a scientific paper or anything in that nature. So I'll be interested to see um, um, a documentation or a scientific 
paper generated out of this and I can give my I can contribute also towards the database too, because I did study in the Belize and Suriname and Guyana, the medicinal plants that are being used in this country and compared with Trinidad and Tobago, especially among the East Indian population. Yeah. So I would like to be in touch with you on that. And I know it's not your interest area, but it is no, a no. potential area. Just to tell you, well, I have this database. I can give you a copy, it's not mine. Uh, yes. In Spanish, you can translate. Okay. Um, and I know the library, we have a special library here, a reference library. You got many information about medicinal plants, but many of them are from India or from Asia. I don't know how much is, how many information is from here, but how many books is are from here. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure because this is not my field. But if I can help you anytime, you can write me and I will sure. ask you to provide what I can give it to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Doc, you need to unmute uh, yes. Yes. Pat, I saw you had your hand up. Yes. Um, thank you. I wasn't sure about these questions. First of all, I didn't um, quite understand uh, Dr. Uh, Morales' area of ex of um, his particular interest, research interest. Which was it? Mine. His area. His area. Yeah, his, uh, his specific I area. Taxonomy and phylogenetic. So I work with taxonomy of plants and phylogenetics, which actually study the relationship of plants basic of DNA information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right. floristics. There are three fields, floristics, taxonomy, and phylogenetics. Right. Yeah, I did pick that up and I was kind of a little bit confused. Okay, thank you very much. One other question though. Con the preservation of plants in a herbarium is very important. I presume that you have a um, good system by which particularly the older plants, how you manage to stop them from being, from deteriorating with age. Yeah, the problem is, well, we have air conditioning because when you remove the air conditioning, just, it's not just here, everywhere in the tropics, the whole world, many bugs, Star appearing, you know, and little insects, tiny insects, and they start eating the flowers and the pollen. The first day started, and they destroy the plant. And so, with low temperatures, you can preserve that. Right now, we are separating all the specimens before 19, 1910 or something. We are separating from every specimen in a special folder to preserve the material, and then somebody else is. Uh, if the material is damaged, we are restoration. We are making, working in the restoration of this material. And then we put that special folder inside the folders to prevent more damage in these older specimens because they are very fragile. Doesn't matter if the specimen is black because that's the color. We, we don't care because we were we work with morphology. That's why the people take field notes, five in size, it's a trio. <laughs> And a stall and flower with white flowers, and we make us up whatever because the, those characters you can see, you get the field notes, but the rest is on the specimen. So, yeah, this is what we are doing right now, uh, trying to protect more of this historical origins. Yeah. Okay. All with right. the size of your With the size of your collection, that's a mammoth task. That's a, a, a huge task, yes. Yeah, but this is a small collection. I used to work in a room with uh, 300,000 specimens. Oh. And before I was in a herbarium with six millions. So that is a lot. So yes. still that small, so you can do it. In a large herbarium, there's no way to do it. Well, there's way, the problem is the money. You need to hire people. Everything is more expensive in those because you know they get big salaries and all the stuff. So 
But here, the small, the bearing is small, so we can do it. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds as if your financial constraints and people constraints are quite considerable. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. It's a problem right now, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Hey, I have a question about, um, have you done studies or worked with persons doing studies on the Tobago main ridge? Tobago is a, Tobago is a, how to say that? Tobago is a different planet. <laughs> Talk about Florida, about the country. If you come to this country, don't be seen Tobago, you will last two sides of this country, to be able to something and to treat that something. In what part? In the vegetation is very different. I have been there just one, once in September for three days, and I was shocked about the differences between the vegetation. Many species, which actually here are very common, you will not find in that island, and some species that you found in that island, you cannot find them here. So, the problem with Tobago is over with this island. I mean, when you go into the collection and you, I have collected more than 2000 specimens in one year. And many of the collections that I had made when I come back and I go to the herbarium, the last collection was made 70 years ago, 80 years ago, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, 60 years ago. And here in front of the university in Mount St. Benedict, it's very close, it's free. Mm -hmm. Two meters, three kilometers, two kilometers in straight line, maybe. And there are plants growing there that in the hybrid, we just have one specimen. Mm. And so that is very common. Oh, yeah, but you're, you're living on, in a different country and you're studying that group and you don't know treating that. You need to make a map. And through Tobago, the problem is I, what I have seen based on the herbarium and what I saw is the island is poorly collected. Because when somebody lives here, you must spend time and money going there and the people don't go because, or they go for lime, vacation, they don't want to work. So probably the island is poorly collected in the ridge, the Northern ridge, you know, in the, in the Northeastern side is crazy, forest is crazy. And the top, the road that goes exactly on the ridge, it's mm -hmm. like to be in Costa Rica, 3,000 meters, 2,000, 2,000 meters, the shape and the trees, I spent two hours just in that ridge, looking for plants and feeling there. I was feeling like in my country at 2,000 meters. So there's still much work to be done in that island, much more work, more than killing Trinidad because it is more, but since it's far away, it's not far away, but you must spend time or money, less people were in, in, in Tobago compared to here. So yeah, I need to make, but my case is, I don't have time. I am work going every almost every week to somewhere else around here, but three that requires more than three days, three days. And I will start teaching next semester, so it will be impossible to go to that for Kutubegi for for three or four days. But yeah, that is the situation. I mean, it's so, very, very, very interesting. So that type of research and work is wide open for people to come in and and investigate and yeah I mean, if somebody yeah. wants to work here or be like a volunteer or whatever no problem i mean um yes we only for field work we are not right now at the moment taking volunteers but doing to work i mean depends on the situation it's about the insurance uh, it's because insurance of the vehicles, but um, yeah, so we are accepting, we will need more the next year to make specific data. So yesterday I have a meeting, I was talking that with my boss, um, not with my boss, but somebody else about all these changes that we need here at the herbarium to get more people, but we are open to collaborations, people that want to come and make volunteer or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. yes. I'm very open to collaborations. I'm very all the time, but open to collaborations. No all right, so we are at 11 a.m. here, 12 in Trinidad. I think it's a good time to um, tune out to, to um, end this episode. 
And we want to thank you again, uh, Dr. Professor Morales, for a very uh, informative and insightful um, lecture today. We also want to thank um, uh, Vayani, <laughs> um, Tony, Mr. Tony, for being um, generous with his time and being our co-host uh, here today. Um, again, we want to thank all of you who've been, uh, many of you have been regulars, if I would say so, regulars on Environmental Fridays. We want to thank you for all of your support and stay tuned for our schedule. It's pretty much all done for next, um, next semester. I believe we have over 16 different speakers from across the Caribbean, the United States, and even from South America. So look forward to, to sharing these times again with you. Happy holidays to everyone. Thank you very much. Happy holidays. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Holidays, everyone. All right, thank you. All right, everyone. All right, Dr. Murray. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you again. Thank you. And we should talk, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, you, you, you're you referring to me or? Yes, I am. Okay, yeah, we'll talk. I think, yeah, I think so. Okay, sounds good. All right. All right. Thank okay. you, Dr. Murray. Okay. Bye for now. All right, bye-bye. Bye, Princess. Bye, thank you. Bye, Walter. <laughs> For more information about our sponsors and partners, please visit the Environmental Fridays Partners and Sponsors page. Be sure to visit our website at www.theenvironmentalfridays.com 